Yes, we kick off with Trump, I suppose. Um, I, I don't know whether people will be surprised when they wake up this morning to, to see that he was being found guilty. I mean, there seemed to be two schools of thought before the jury came back. One was, there's not really a crime that's been committed here, which is what people said who supported Trump. Others said, well, no, no, he's definitely going to jail. He's definitely a criminal. He's now been found guilty. Um, the Mirror, as I say this morning, say he's going to face jail. Probably won't go to jail. But it's an extraordinary story nonetheless, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think pretty much where you stood on the trial is where you stood before uh, they convicted yeah. him and where you stand after. I don't think this uh, verdict or these 34 verdicts uh, move the dial at all. If people thought Trump was innocent beforehand, um, they probably still do now. And if people thought Trump was guilty beforehand, they probably still do now. All this is going to do is continue to uh, sow those divisions within American politics because people will feel that this is a stitch up or those who believe that Trump is innocent mm. will feel that justice has been done. One of the things that did happen apparently was that the Trump website crashed immediately uh, that the, the verdict came out because so many people were trying to get on uh, to give him even more money for his election campaign, which he also was able to use, by the way, uh, to pay his legal fees. Yeah, I mean, that's just very interesting, isn't it? Because I think... America is quite conspiratorial minded and I think there's a lot of people there who will see this as bolstering the need for Trump to be president. You know, he said when he gave his his sort of statement at the end when he was convicted, he said, this is a stitch up. This isn't over yet. Mm. I'm going to continue to fight. The, the, the judge was uh, corrupt. The jury was rigged, you know completely adamant that he is innocent and this is a conspiracy against him. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, um, the, as far as I understand it, the sentencing will not take place until July, by which point he's probably going to be established as the main candidate because we'll have had the uh, Republican National Convention and probably we will know officially that Biden is the Democrat candidate as well. Um, he's appealing this, the case anyway. So even if he is sentenced to jail, which people seem to think is unlikely because he's a first time offender and it's really a white collar crime anyway, um, what I was saying earlier to Megan Gittos was we could have the fascinating prospect of him actually going back to court uh, to defend himself in an appeal while he's in the White House, while he's actually president, if he wins. Yeah, it's, it's unprecedented, you yeah. know. Um, it's completely extraordinary that America could have a sitting president who is not only a convicted felon, but who is fighting, I mean, as you say, probably won't be jail time. Um, but we do know Trump is under investigation for other things to yeah. do with the uh, the uh, insurrection and the attempt on the White House. So um, there's plenty more to come with this and Donald Trump. But absolutely, I, I don't think this. I mean, some people were saying does, this could potentially mean he he will never be president. There are enough American voters who now will go to the ballot box and say, actually, I don't know if I can vote mm. for a convicted felon. We don't have any means to test that on because we've never seen this before. So no. we don't know if that will move the dial. But I don't think it, it changes whether people think he's innocent or guilty. No, exactly right. Well, we'll be talking to some people over there later on during this show. So we'll see uh, how that is all affected. But I'm interested as well in, you know, how we normally look at American um, sort of culture, if not politics, and see that we end up finally adopting whatever it is that they do there. And I wonder whether in the first week of our election battle that you've watched over the last few days, um, is there any sign that we could be moving in that same direction where people are so polarised that they can't actually see anybody to vote for apart from who they always vote for? I do think American politics um, and, that, and that kind of American culture around politics is slowly moving to the UK because of the spread of social media and things like that. But I still think in this country, people are, 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 are we, we have more kind of swing voters than we have people, I think, who are quite dogmatic mm. about things. And, you know, we have seen this in this election. The big push is for voters in the centre ground, which is why both the Tories and Labour are converging on a lot of those main issues. Um, and actually, you know, it's interesting, all this kind of turmoil with Labour. I've seen more people over the last week say that they're not sure now if they can vote for Keir Starmer no. because of what's going on in the Labour Party. Whether that is actually true when people get to the ballot box, quite a lot of people are just united around the fact that they want to get the Tories out of government mm. and they will vote to we have a first past the post system, two party system, which is not too dissimilar from the US's uh, two party system as well. But, it, you know, I, I think people are a bit more tactical and a bit more strategic here in the UK and possibly a bit more, a bit less dogmatic about politics and about their kind of theories and culture behind politics as well. Yeah.